Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today we are getting into a dark romance vlog. I am not like super well versed in dark romance, but I am trying to get into it. Number one, because hello, it is the month of Valentine's Day. It is love month and I want some romance, but y'all know I'm not really, I don't really do a lot of contemporary romance. I maybe read like one a month. I can't really do more than that. So we're gonna go the dark route. Also, I have been not reading extreme horror at all. I'm kind of boycotting the genre. I'm kind of done with it uh, because the authors will not take a stance and name the misogyny problem in the genre. That might not resonate with you deep enough to leave the genre in the dust, but for me, having a personal connection and real life implications that have come from this horrible standard in the genre that is just what's right for me and uh i'm not gonna lie i do miss parts of it i do like reading dark material i always have so i'm hoping that dark romance can be a way to kind of replace that there's a lot of similarities between the genres obviously they both cover really dark themes they're both deeply deeply unrealistic a lot of the time not something that you would want to emulate in real life but i'm hoping that the element that won't be in dark romance is the misogyny obviously because most dark romance is written by female identifying people so i'm just gonna be reading a few dark romances in this vlog and we're gonna get to know more of my taste i have enjoyed a couple in the past i really liked still beating by jennifer hartman which was a kidnapping romance it was totally wild kind of cringy but i gave it four stars because it was just so entertaining and drama filled it was just like nothing that you could ever possibly conceive or imagine and that's what i like about the dark romance genre it's not like a contemporary where you're constantly comparing it to real life because it is so out of the realm of possibility for example my favorite dark romance that i've ever read and one of my favorite books period that i've ever read is there are no saints by sophie lark oh my god i absolutely love that duology by Sophie Lark. It is a serial killer romance and it is just so absolutely ridiculous. The girls that get it really just get it and the girls that don't, I guess you can have fun with the stick up your ass taking everything a little bit too seriously but those are the kind of books that I've liked in the dark romance genre in the past so that is what I'm kind of going to be looking for in this video. I have started out with All the Little Raindrops by Mia Sheridan and I don't know if this is necessarily branded as a dark romance it certainly doesn't look like it just based on the cover but when I read the description I had a sneaking suspicion that it might be and I think that I'm right if it's not categorized as a dark romance it definitely should be it kind of reminds me of The Butterfly Garden by Dot Hutchison if you have read that if you're a thriller reader and it also does remind me of Still Beating as well basically this is a kidnapping romance where we are following this little girl. She is a senior in high school. She just turned 18 and she was taken from her waitressing job. She wakes up being held hostage by these unknown assailants and one day she wakes to find that she is not alone. There is a boy in the cage next to hers and not only that, here's the ridiculous dramaness that I love of dark romance. He is the son of the man who who killed her mother like <laughs> how crazy like telenovela vibes is that that would literally never happen nobody's trying to say that this would be real life but it sure is entertaining and wow is it dark for the first third that i've read a about a little under a third i guess i've read the first like 120 pages we have just been following them in captivity as they're forced to do various things and it's not just like one man took them and is torturing them like it is in still beating no 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 no, no. this is like a whole 
web this is the whole operation like it's kind of giving for the sake of by judith sonnet where there's like this rich elite who are paying to see things happen to these two kids i'm calling them kids but they are both 18 they're just in high school so they do read younger and right at the third mark we are out of that scenario so it does say on the back that they escape and then the book picks up years later as they're trying to work with a private investigator and kind of get revenge and justice for the people who kidnapped them and tortured them and that is kind of the point that we're at now so i think it's paced well i think books that are 50 50 like in captivity and then escape kind of feel like you're lulling at that 50 percent mark i've read a few books like that where it just kind of makes me want to put it down like tears of tests that one really didn't work for me but this one the pacing is really really good we also get the perspective of one of the people who were paying to torture them so that's very interesting as well i am just really liking it i mean it sounds weird to say that i'm liking it but i'm very entertained by it it's fast paced it's crazy seeing their whole escape i was like honestly i don't know how they're gonna get themselves out of here but they freaking did it i mean obviously i knew it was coming because it was on the back but there was some piece of my mind that was like they're not gonna get out they're not gonna get out they did and it was so well done the way that they escaped now we're kind of in the aftermath and there's like tension going on there obviously their families don't get along at all because his dad allegedly killed her mother I'm sure there's gonna be stuff going on there, but I'm also more excited to get into the revenge plot. So that's kind of where I'm at with all the little raindrops. I'm super interested, super intrigued, can't wait to get to this later, but I do have to go to work. So I'm probably going to get some stuff done around the house. You can probably hear I have my laundry going. I feel like every time I sit down to film, I have the laundry going, but that's just the way it is. So I'll probably finish up some stuff around the house, make myself a little sneaky snack, go to work, and then when I'm home, I'll get back into her. Oh, also I forgot to mention earlier, I was looking um, like at my library to see if the audiobook was available because I didn't want to stop reading it. Um, I knew I had to put my book down to go to the gym, but I was like, I wonder if I can find this audiobook so I don't have to stop reading. And I couldn't find it on like any library app, but it was 99 cents on Audible. I don't know if that's just like a random deal that they're running or what, but I didn't have to buy a credit or anything, which usually you do on Audible. It was just like randomly 99 cents. So that was cool. If you're interested in it, go run and see if that promotion is still running. Hello vlog, it is much much later after work. I'm actually about to go to bed, but I wanted to give you an update of where I'm at because I've been reading quite a bit today. This book sucked me in so much. It is so scandalous. The reveals are so drama, so shocking. It's just, it's insane. I always forget every time I read dark romance like how wild it is. <laughs> this shit is crazy there are so moments that it feels like a thriller it feels like a horror book it feels just insane and then there are some moments 
where it feels like a sweet little romance. One of the characters has moved to like a east coast beach like south carolina and i just really like the vibes i feel like it's really good for this time of year it takes place in like march and it's like cold breeze but like on the beach i don't know the vibes are really good the like switching between the romance and the thrills is like a really good mix i'm still super intrigued like I'm loving it. I can't wait to see what happens and how the story resolves. Uh, I can't remember if I said, but I'm like two thirds in now. So I only have like a little over a hundred pages left. Hopefully I can get back into this tomorrow and give you guys a full review. Good morning vlog. It is the next day. I don't know why I always do the double P sign. I like have to stop doing that, but <laughs> I have read a little bit more of all the little raindrops while I was getting ready. I was just continuing the audio. I love having the audio in the physical so I never have to stop reading my book and I can just be in my little book land all day long. Use your audiobooks from your library. Get those audible deals because it's literally the best ever. Anyway, I only have like 70 or so pages left of this book. I'm at the 300 page mark and honestly, it does not feel like I've read 300 pages. This book has flown by and the biggest thing that's standing out to me right now are like two main characters are being like little investigators and they're about to get their justice i know it at least i hope for it but the biggest thing that's standing out is that this feels like a jennifer hillier book not only the romance combined with the thriller part of it but also the investigator part of it the way that the investigation is unfolding just feels like a jennifer hillier thriller so if you're not a dark romance girly i feel like you could still definitely get into this if you're a jennifer hillier thriller lover and we know i am a jennifer hillier stan so yeah still really enjoying it i'm gonna go to work but i have quite a few little breaks today throughout my day so hopefully i'll get some good reading time as well back a little bit later i did some work i had some meetings i had some lunch and i finished up all the little i almost said all the little teardrops ah, all the little raindrops on my lunch break and the ending was kind of crazy like it totally popped off the mystery all the pieces like came together the stuff from the past and the stuff that was transpiring in the present timeline all the little investigator pieces the romance all of it just like came together in a satisfying way and that is what i love about dark romance even though it's like twisted and dark content a lot of times the ending that you get is not like bleak and unsatisfying which a lot of extreme horror is that way um instead it feels satisfying i mean it's still like heartbreaking and traumatic it's not satisfying in that way like emotionally but it's satisfying in the way that the story wraps up it feels like there's an ending instead of like what a lot of extreme horror authors do which is just like okay the depravity's done and i'm not really a good writer so i don't really know how to end it so there you go it's bleak it's a bleak ending but it's really just like but you didn't do much yeah this had a very clear ending a little tiny epilogue which it was kind of cheesy like the romance parts of this were kind of cringe but i liked the fast-paced mystery elements and the really the plot like the plot was just good it wasn't a favorite of all time but it was so so entertaining and easy to read 
I feel weird saying that like a kidnapping torture scenario was easy to read, but it was like, it just felt like T, like the investigative T was giving the entire time. So if that sounds interesting to you, highly recommend. I think I'm gonna give it four stars. And next up, I feel like I have to read this in this video because this is the dark romance that is currently sweeping the nation or at least sweeping my For You page. And that is The Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. Um, I guess this is part of a trilogy, but I don't know what number it is. Oh yeah, it has to be the first one. It just came out last month. So this is gonna be a trilogy. Um, I don't know what it's about, but I do see this like extensive list of content warnings. So I'll just go over that for you in case you're interested. It says, as much as Butcher and Blackbird is a dark romantic comedy and will hopefully make you laugh through the madness, it is still dark. So please read responsibly. If you have questions, contact me, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here are the warnings. Eyeballs and eye sockets, amateur surgery, skin ornaments, chainsaws, axes, knives, scalpels, a lot of sharp objects, accidental cannibalism, not so accidental cannibalism, questionable use of a mummified corpse, lobotomized manservant, ill-advised use of kitchen implements, cookies and cream ice cream, Okay, detailed sex scenes, which include, okay, I don't think I can say that kind of stuff out loud on YouTube. Uh, references to parental neglect and child abuse, parental loss, references to CSA, and it's a book about serial killers, so there's generally some messed up murder and chaos. For those of you who read the trigger warnings and said accidental cannibalism, count me in, this one's for you. Uh, there's also a playlist, and that playlist includes Heroin by Lana Del Rey. So I am pretty excited to get into this. It's a serial killer romance, which I have enjoyed some of those in the past. So this this book is following Sloane and Rowan. They are both serial killers, but they are like-minded souls who enjoy killing other killers. They are ready to claim more than just their newfound love. Ooh, ooh. Okay, I'm excited. This is gonna be so silly, goofy, unserious, but also like dark and twisted. I hope that this matches up to all of the reviews. People are saying this is like world changing, world altering. So we will see about that. I have to jump into a meeting in literally, oh my God, 20 minutes, but I'm gonna try to get into this just a little bit. I will let you know what I'm thinking when I do. Hello vlog, good morning. It is the next day. I stayed up so late last night just getting the podcast ready to go up today. I was thinking that I had to be up by Thursday, but the Patreon girlies get it 24 hours early. So I was like, oh my God, I was having this freak out last night where I was like, wait, I have to get this episode up tomorrow. So the episode literally just went live, at least for Patreon. If you don't know about my podcast that I host with my friend Deja, we talk about books, we talk about life, we talk about pop culture. Uh, we did an episode that was like hot takes. So people think that it's like a hot take podcast. It's not. <laughs> We're just girls talking about books and life. Um, so yeah, if you want to check it out, the video version is on Patreon and it comes out a little bit earlier, or you can just listen to the regular audio version on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or we actually have an audio version on YouTube as well. So that's always linked down below if you want to check it out. It's called Gabbing It Up because we're just little gabbing girls. But yeah, that's what I was doing last night and I just wanted to make sure when I exported everything that it like got out okay so it takes like an hour or something to export and during that hour I got to read my book so it actually worked out <laughs> that I had to stay up until like 1 30 in the morning because I got about a quarter of the way into Butcher and Blackbird and y'all this book is so unserious like that is the best word I can use to describe this book it is the most unserious thing I've ever read in my entire life like I've read serial killer romances in the past and all the ones that I've read it kind of like had this air of like ooh, but it's a little bit mm. This book isn't trying to do that. This book isn't trying to do anything other than be an entertaining wacky time. It is so funny, so ridiculous, so weird. It's literally 
like if a rom-com was a dark romance. So maybe you are wanting to get into dark romance. I think this might be a good place to start because it really does have the like banter and <laughs> tropiness of a rom-com, but these two people are serial killers. It's like kind of genius and I'm kind of eating it up. I don't know. It definitely doesn't feel like a five star feeling. Like I've been laughing with the book and at the book the same amount of time. So I don't think it's going to be like a favorite, but I'm intrigued and I'm entertained at least a quarter of the way through at least. I'm like, this is kind of interesting, kind of funny. I don't really feel any strong attachments to the characters, but I'm enjoying the plot. Also, y'all know what I'm watching right now. You know, I have Risa Tisa on my phone and she's been on my phone for like the past 24 hours. I am trying to catch up with who the fuck did I marry? If y'all have not experienced the phenomenon that is who the fuck did I marry? You have to run to TikTok, watch Risa Tisa right now. She is basically just telling her story, like her truth of what happened to her being married to a pathological liar during COVID. It is heartbreaking, but it's also shocking and wild. Like Netflix has to pick up her story. I mean, they're already, I'm sure, making rip-off Lifetime movies of her story, which is unfortunate, but I really hope she finds peace and gets her bag in some way from telling her truth because I think this is gonna save a lot of women who are questioning their spouses. I hope, I hope there are people in my life who are caught in situations um, who are watching this and internalizing it and using the knowledge that Miss Risa Tisa is so kindly sharing with us because she did not have to share her story like this. But yeah, that's what's consuming my life this morning is watching Who the Fuck Did I Marry? I'm about to go to the gym and I'm literally just gonna run on the treadmill and listen to Miss Risa Tisa. I feel like I'm gonna run unlimited miles because as long as she's talking, I'm locked in, like I'm engaged. So <laughs> Hopefully I get some good miles in and um, I'm not going to give you an update about who the fuck did I marry, but the next time that I pick up my book, I will give you an update about that. And apparently the dogs need to go out, so I will see you later. Hello vlog, I am currently done with work. I'm in the kitchen. I am making some spaghetti and meatballs, which you're probably gonna see in the B-roll, but I didn't read anything today. Uh, it was just a really busy, like kind of overwhelming day, so I didn't read anything yet, and honestly, the new Love is Blind episodes are out, so I might not read anything tonight. I don't know, but rest assured, when I read, you will be the first to know. vlog it is much later oh my gosh love is blind got so wild basically every man is a liar and a cheater and you cannot trust any of them and like pretty much every woman is fine <laughs> that is what i got from everything like i feel so bad for so many other women but anyway anyway this is not love is blind chat this is butcher and blackbird chat honestly y'all I'm at the halfway point. I'm not really seeing the hype for this one. Like, I think it's really fun, but it's just giving average. Like, it's just giving mindless fun entertaining. I don't see why this is like popping off the way it is because to me, it's just giving like a fun way to pass the time. I'm not feeling what the girlies are feeling. Maybe I'm crazy. I don't know. Somebody tell me what I'm not getting. Maybe it'll just 
kick in after the halfway point i don't know but so far it just feels like this formulaic thing of like they're competing to kill a serial killer one of them wins then they have this flirtation and then it happens again and it's like on this cycle and i'm not really feeling like a deepening of connection honestly because it started out like kind of not insta lovey but like they were obsessed with each other from the jump from the second they first saw each other they knew who each other were and they were obsessed so i'm just like where does that leave us that doesn't leave us anywhere where we can like feel the ups and downs and the tracking of the relationship like i don't know it's just not giving anything special for me right now but i'm not having a bad time like it's definitely fun and entertaining and crazy so i'm enjoying it but it just doesn't feel like what the girlies were selling me on so i don't know i will have to read more of this and let you know but for now i am so tired so i'm going to bed good night good morning vlog oh my gosh i just had the most amazing morning i had like back to back to back sessions in the park and it was so nice and it was just beautiful outside so I got home and I immediately was like, I'm going to the pool. It is the first pool day of 2024. Crazy that this happens in February, a little alarming, <laughs> but also that's Texas for you. So I'm gonna go read Butcher and Blackbird at the pool and hopefully the other girlies that are out there are not thinking that I'm a freak. Hopefully they don't even know what this book is about, but that's what I'm about to go do. I gotta get my airpods plugged in i gotta get a massive cup of water i gotta get an olipop and i gotta get a towel and then i'll be on my way hello vlog i am back from my little layout by the pool it was so nice i was just down there for a couple hours but it was so nice to just lay and feel the heat of the sun and the coolness of the water on my little toes. It was too cold to like submerge. It's only like 83 degrees, which only people in the north are probably like, that's insane. But it was so good, so relaxing. I feel like I'm like running in slow motion because it was so nice. And I got to the 75% mark of Butcher and Blackbird. That whole quarter, like the third quarter of this book is literally just smut. It's like smut every other chapter, smut, 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 smut. And I wasn't really feeling much, I'm gonna be totally real. It read a little bit cringe to me. It read a little bit try hard to me, like, Ooh, I want to be edgy so bad like that's kind of how the smut read there were parts that were good there were other parts that just like felt like a little forced I guess but again like it's not a bad book I can see why people like this I'm not really understanding why people are hyping it up so much because it just seems kind of like any other rom-com but make it like more dark coded i definitely would not describe this as a dark romance in the sense that it's like dark content like there's really not a lot of emotional turmoil or triggering things in here which is why like i guess the whole trigger warning list is a little like it feels a little like overkill to me honestly and i'm one to always ask for trigger warnings to be included y'all know that so if i'm saying that you know like this is pretty light it literally reads like contemporary rom-com vibes but they're serial killers and honestly there's not a ton of serial killing being done there's not a lot of like darkness and like angst about it it's just kind of like oop, <laughs> we're little killers <laughs> i don't know i don't know i also i think part of it is i like sloan the woman but i don't like rowan the man character like he's just not really appealing to me he says some cringe stuff the description of him like the only thing that sounds attractive to me is the tattoos he has this accent and i'm like are we ever gonna understand why it seems that his brothers don't have an accent but he has an irish accent and like an irish accent is not attractive to me i don't know i'm not one to be like all feeling things about an accent like maybe british maybe like that seems kind of basic irish and scottish like that actively like puts me off um no i'm just not really attracted to that so when she puts it like oh my god yeah he said something in his little accent i'm just like mm, is that supposed to be doing something for me 
I guess I'm kind of cringing. I guess I'm like not loving it. <laughs> the more that I talk about it, the more I'm like, eh. But honestly, the reading experience isn't bad. Like I'm just being nitpicky. Yeah, mixed bag of thoughts. I am going to eat myself a little bit of lunch and get ready to film the podcast. I have to film the podcast tonight before my night sessions. And then I have dinner plans with my friends. So I don't know if I will be getting back to this book before the end of tonight. If I do, I will let you know. Okay, I forgot to take vlog footage. So pretend that our drinks are full. Wow, this is Wow, so delicioso. Happy margarita day. <laughs> I'm gonna get B-roll here. I'm not gonna forget. Slid. Hello, vloggity vlog. Oh my god, my fucking voice. Can you tell that I went to a happy hour last night not knowing it was National Margarita Day? Mm-hmm, yeah. So, we found out it was National Margarita Day. <laughs> and uh, I fear we were out for a while. It was not a happy hour. It was a happy evening. And um, we ended up at a little bar. You know, we were just kikiing. It was a good fun time. Um, but I did wake up early enough this morning to finish my book before I had to start my work day, which I feel like that's kind of a slay. Uh, I was supposed to wake up and go to the gym, but girl, mm -mm, that was not about to happen. So I just laid in bed and finished Butcher and Blackbird by Bryn Weaver. And I, I mean, the third act conflict wasn't annoying. Like it made sense within the plot. And that's why I kind of do like dark romance um, more than just like your typical rom-com because you're not going to get just like a third act miscommunication. You're going to get a third act like mishap with the butcher knife or something like that like you know what i mean i'm not gonna give away spoilers but like the third act issue is always a lot more interesting in a dark romance even though this one is leaning more rom-com for sure i still liked that element the ending was cheesy cringy it stayed on with the cringe smut a little bit i don't know i just felt like this was kind of average i kind of want to give it a 2.5 out of 5 stars it just didn't feel like like all the little raindrops had like a weight to it like it was giving dark romance this is not giving that this is really just a rom-com between two serial killers i would not actually call this dark romance i would call this serial killer rom-com if you like dark romance if you're looking for dark romance i wouldn't pick this up if you're looking for maybe you're a rom-com girly that's trying to dip your toes into a serial killer romance or something like that start here if you like the vibes if you're not freaked out by some of the elements in here you could maybe move your way up to there are no saints or something like that because i liked that book so much more than this one this is going to get a two and a half star for me now we are moving on to my last book of this little dark romance vlog and that is the first book in the witsec series by ashley and Ross deck and that is find me so you've probably heard of these if you are on book talk if you know anything about dark romances I feel like this series has become super super popular I got these special editions on pango books and it came with these matching bookmarks with the cool covers for the whole series and they're actually signed which I think is so cool so I hope that I like these so I can like feel a lot of joy of having these really cool copies but if i don't this is aspen's favorite series so i'm literally just gonna send these books to aspen <laughs> Uh, Aspen's probably rooting for me to hate these. I actually hope that I like it. I feel like this is going to be closer to what I'm usually looking for from a dark romance. It's also reverse harem. So yeah, it's basically following this girl and a year ago she was orphaned. Her whole family, including her twin sister, just got murdered and taken out. And now a year later she's like grappling with the trauma of it, living with her uncle. And next door to her uncle live this like mm, little quad quartet. What do you call it? Quartet um, of four brothers. Their names are Colt, Creed, Keelan, and Knox. And it says they will soon become her everything. As if my lonely heart screamed out for someone good to find me and four answered back. Like reverse harem trauma healing 
family murdered see this sounds like a dark romance to me this to me is not going to give rom-com and i think it's going to give dirty disgusting which y'all know I like that. This is a four book series, Find Me, Save Me, Love Me, and Free Me. Obviously, I'm gonna start with the first one, Find Me. If I end up liking this one, I am gonna read the rest of the books in the series over on Patreon. If you want to watch me read that, you can sign up for my Patreon. It's always linked down below. It's where I host my book club. My most basic tier is $3, and it's just like reading sprints, chatting with me, the little kikis and the second tier is five dollars and that is the book club and then if you want the full experience you can do the top tier for 11.99 and i think it's 11.99 and that is where you will see all of the patreon exclusive videos i put so many hours into the patreon exclusive videos especially the ones that i've been putting out this year i have really found a new passion for like making those patreon videos because I can be creative you know I'm not thinking about what a bunch of people like thousands of people on the internet would want to see from me so I have to like conform to like what the comments are asking for I'm not worrying about an algorithm and like only making content that will have a reach like I on patreon fully just get to be creative and yeah so if I end up liking this one that will be an exclusive patreon video if you're interested in it you can sign up down below but yeah i have got to go to work i will hopefully get into find me maybe a little bit on my lunch break but i also think i'm gonna try to go to the pool after work today so probably laying out as well i will let you know what i have thoughts y'all boba is so funny she literally knows the length of a 50 minute session like my telehealth sessions when i do them immediately at the, at the 50 minute mark like i was just kind of doing some scheduling stuff with my last client she was scratching the shit out of my leg i'm like what are you doing as soon as i end the call she jumps up in my lap like she keeps me keeping my boundaries she's like bitch the 50 minutes is up you've got to go <laughs> look at her just being so baby i know she's so cute i can't i love you look at you look at your little face you're just adorable meanwhile during that telehealth session <laughs> where boba was being an angel keeping my clock mochi ate a candlestick so <laughs> i don't know <laughs> and that's just the duality of chihuahuas right there okay y'all actually we're gonna have to pause the pool day pause the vlog pause literally everything because my car's ready if you don't know if you didn't watch the last vlog um, my car was attempted to be carjacked and they failed. They didn't even know how to fucking hotwire it correctly. And instead they just left me with $3,500 worth of damage to my fucking car. It was undrivable. It's really fun, <laughs> really cute, really just love it. But the manic caliber collision was so amazing. He promised me, he's like, I'm gonna get this done in record time. Just wait. Even if the parts are on back order, you just wait. I fear, what's his name? I'm gonna give him a shout out. Matthew James, Matthew James, a good Matt, holy shit. Um, he slayed, he really slayed, he got my car done. It was originally quoted me March 14th. Today is February 23rd. Um, Matthew absolutely ate, so I'm gonna go pick up my car. I'm so excited, I'm literally waiting on the curb in the park <laughs> uh, for my Uber so I can go pick up the car, I'm so excited. I did it, I got my fucking car back. Fuck you, Curtis. Curtis is the man who tried to steal my fucking car. Fuck you, bro. And I just ordered an anti-theft wheel lock device as well as an air tag to put in my goddamn car. So if you steal it, if you come back and you take it, Curtis, I'm gonna know where you are. And I'm, I'm not gonna do anything. Mm -mm, I'm not threatening you, this is not a threat, but I will call the APD, the incompetent ass APD on your ass. I will. I feel vindicated. I feel so amazing. I love feminine rage. Can I just say, can we just celebrate the fact that women are allowed to be angry. I'm so fucking angry. This man tried to take my car, but I'm so happy that I have it back. So I'm gonna go celebrate by reading some fucked up trauma romantic smut by the pool.
vlog i had such a good time laying out by the pool one of my neighbors came down and we were just kikiing and i'm loving my book so it's just all around a good time right now i'm loving this i am a third of the way through if my neighbor wouldn't have come down i think i maybe would have read the whole book <laughs> just straight through because i love this our main character shiloh is so interesting to me she isn't like typical girly girl she's also not giving not like other girls like she is just she feels normal she feels like a real genuine person that could exist and she's really going through it she's like trying to recover from the worst thing that could ever happen to her and here's the thing the man who hurt her family is still out there that is like the thrilling part of it that i think makes this feel so much more high stakes than other dark romances that I've read because it's not just like healing from trauma it's like no he's literally still out there she's like building these bonds with the brothers right now they're literally just friends I love that they're building these like safe very sweet connections with her and nobody's really like tried anything with her like they really understand her trauma it's obvious that they have their own set of traumas um as well so it's just like sweet and good right now and I cannot wait to see how these relationships develop and like who she'll end up with like I can't imagine she'll just end up with all three of them right like maybe she will I don't know but all that to say I am loving it I think I might binge this tonight because I love it so much it's just fun and easy to read and I like the characters and I like the darkness of it um you can feel the vibes of romance beginning but again it's just like friends right now so I'm excited to see how the smut plays out especially with like all of this build up I think it'll be great um, but right now I've been craving wings for approximately a month now and I have not gotten my wings so me and Cameron are gonna go to one of my favorite wing places and I'm gonna get some spicy lemon pepper wings and curly fries or maybe waffle fries I don't know this place has a lot of different types of potato and I'm a sucker for a potato I'm such a potato girl so I, I need to decide what type of potato I'm gonna get what form but I'm definitely gonna get some type of form and I'm very excited because I'm hungry so off we go Hello. What's up? It's the next morning, obviously. We just hung out last night after we got our little wings and our little drinkies. We just watched some yellow jackets, which we literally only have the season finale of season one left to watch. It's killing me. I need to know what happens, but this man, this sassy ass man was falling asleep. And every time I tried to wake him up, he was so sassy. So I just gave up. <laughs> And I read another third of Find Me. So I'm like 175 pages in. Holy shit. Remember my last update when I was like, oh yeah, like they're just really good friends. Mm, no, they're no longer just really good friends. Okay, well they still are. But like the tension is at an all time high. I have not read a romance with such amazing tension building until this point and i guess it is technically like a slow burn because we're almost 70 percent of the way through and they haven't gotten together yet but i don't feel like it's a slow burn like there's enough information and like obviously the little like mystery murder plot is keeping me intrigued so y'all i'm loving it i'm actually like feeling emotion about it and these men aren't even my type like when they're described i'm like really could go either way like that's not something i'm running to go take advantage of not take advantage of but you know what i mean i'm not trying to run over there for these men but the way that they treat her i could be tempted i fear it wouldn't take that much tempting also one thing that i guess could be kind of annoying for other people but i'm kind of eating up is 
they're all so fucking obsessed with her. Like every man in this book is so obsessed with her. If you're a delusional girl, you're gonna eat this up. You're gonna love it. Cause it's like, yeah, of course. If I was her, like every man would be obsessed with me. So this is for the delusional girls. If that annoys you, like the Selena Sardothian effect is what I've been calling it because it's like, every person can't just help but be obsessed with this person, you're gonna be annoyed by the Salida Sardothian effect of the main character of this book. But if you like that, if you're delusional, yeah, this is gonna work out for you. I'm so excited to finish it today and I'm pretty sure I'm gonna read the rest of the series. But again, that'll be over on Patreon because I'm a businesswoman. So I'm gonna finish up this book and let you know my final thoughts. vlog and welcome to what am i saying this is just an update why did i start this like new video i don't know my brain may be a short circuiting because of the cliffhanger this book left me on y'all there was only like one smut scene all of that tension built and then it was heightened even more because the thriller plot left on a cliffhanger so i'm stuck with all this pent up feeling of like, these people need to hook up now. And I'm also stuck with this feeling of what the hell is gonna happen to her? Like I, I truly have been so affected by this book. The suspense, the mystery, all of it, the trauma, it feels like a really dark thriller. It's a genuinely good thriller plot. But then we also have the elements of like her healing and healing individually, but then also healing in the context of relationships through building connections with these four guys. If you like a reverse harem that is slow burn, tons of tension and a immaculate thriller plot you will love the wet sex series just this first book has me absolutely shook i love it so much i feel like i don't even have to say it but i gave it five stars obviously this is one of my favorite dark romances that i've read i cannot wait to read the rest of the series if i had to nitpick there were a couple things that just like mildly annoyed me. Not enough to take away from the experience of the book, but there were a couple things, just like quirks about our main character that I just thought were a little grating and annoying. And that's just a personal preference kind of thing. Our main female character is obsessed with like DC and Marvel and like all of her undergarments and a lot of her clothes were like superhero merch. I just thought that was a little cringe. Like she, I get it. She's supposed to be like relatable and kind of nerdy and like not like this perfect ingenue, which in theory I like. I just think the way that she chose to characterize her like that, it was just a little cringe, okay? I also hate superhero movies, so I'm sorry if you like them, but it just, it cringed me out a little bit. And similarly, she had this aversion to cussing. I guess like her mom really didn't like it when she cussed and obviously she lost her mom. So she was like, oh my God, I'm just like never gonna cuss again because my mom doesn't like it. Like, why are you gonna be a little bitch about it? You know what I mean? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. Like I do tend to cuss a lot. I'm sorry if that offends you, but yeah, she would say things like gosh dang and cheese and rice. That's the one that really fucking got me. Like be so fucking for real you're not gonna be so frustrated with your four boyfriends and turn around and go cheese and rice like i actually wanted to kill her in that moment <laughs> but honestly if those are the two annoying things and i'm really grasping at straws for the two flaws of this book i feel like i can live with it um and hopefully it just becomes like a more endearing thing for the rest of the series i cannot wait to continue it so overall my foray into dark romance this week has been really good i mean i think butcher and blackbird just didn't quite fit this category i don't totally understand the hype but that kind of happens with tiktok books a lot of times they get so overblown on book talk and then i read them and i'm like Okay, yeah, it was fine. It was a good little entertaining time, but 
I don't know. That's something that maybe we need to talk about on the podcast. Let me know if y'all would want to listen to something like that. We've kind of talked about the culture shift around reading already. I will link that podcast episode if you want to hear about that. But yeah, I don't think it was a bad book. I get why people really like it. All the Little Raindrops was actually really good, really entertaining. If you like a Lifetime movie that is a little bit better, less cheesy, not too much less, but less enough that you're more bought into the story, I think you would love that one. And really, if you're a fan of Dark romances or fan of thrillers, romantic thrillers, you will love Find Me and hopefully the entirety of the Witsex series. So I'm pretty happy. I cannot wait to read more dark romance. If you have suggestions for me, please leave your suggestions down below. I want to know y'all's favorite dark romances. Maybe I will do a follow-up to this vlog and read y'all's suggestions. I think that would be so fun. I also have Haunting and Hunting Adeline as well as Satan's Affair. So that vlog will be coming at some point. Thank you guys so so, so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got a good recommendation out of it. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week and I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!